looking at some Amazon Basin emerald tree boas. So uh, tree boas, including Amazon tree boas, annulated tree boas, uh, Trinidad tree boas, emerald tree boas, Amazon Basin emerald tree boas. Some of these guys are arboreal snakes and they have a little bit of finesse needed, some more than others, when you're feeding them. And it's not so much about getting them to eat. It's what you do to manage. Just want to wake this one up. Come here. What you want to do to manage their husbandry. And these guys are getting rained on all the time in nature. One's down there. It's a lot of foliage. So they get rained on, so pretty much the water's coming to them every day. And it's very important to make sure they are hydrated and uh, not all reptiles understand a water dish is actually the place to get water. This guy's shedding right there, so he didn't want to eat, but everybody else except for that one, I was just sleeping guys are eating so another thing that's interesting about these guys they'll often go to sleep or almost go to sleep some of them will just grab their their rodent so these guys are can actively eat defrosted prey or, or fresh killed prey i never feed live whenever possible i never feed live 10 million different reasons well exaggerating a little bit but a lot of different reasons why I don't um, I do indeed like rodents I love rats so uh, humanely euthanized rat is instantaneous and uh, a defrosted rodent is wonderful there's no dangers to the animal I can't believe this one isn't isn't eating it's like the last one I was just fed all these and the last one, are you gonna wake up? I was like, okay, I'll just show offering a rat to this guy. And this one isn't eating. Sometimes you just rub it on them and they'll wake up. So that one is really not having it. So we can just spend a little bit of time looking at these guys. So Amazon basins and emerald tree boas, which are like northern, you know, Guyana, Suriname stock. These are an animal that uh, does almost better with a, a bit of almost neglect. It's almost like a, I, mean, I, I can't say a plant literally, but in some ways they're really wonderful to look at and uh, your setup's just gotta be good. And your feeding is pretty much, depends like the size of the prey item. So if you're going a little bit bigger then maybe every two weeks, if you're going a little bit smaller, you can get, get by um, 10 to 14 days. So one of the worst things you could do is not manage your temperatures and you feed it. And if it's too cold or if it's too hot and it doesn't have the temperature parameters that it needs. So this animal is going to thermoregulate. So it's going to have a basking area and it's going to have a cooler ambient temperature. We also got to make sure we have perch sizes correct. Um, contrary to, you know, even what I would think, they often seem to like to sit on some of the smallest perches. And uh, so here in this case, I use three quarter, two inch, and a, I think it's inch and a quarter on these. Yes, yeah, so I have three quarter inch, an inch and a quarter. 
I literally think I could comfortably put half inch perches in here. You're shedding. And uh, a lot of them would, would pick that out. So when these guys are gravid, uh, at some point they're gonna start refusing food and uh, they are basically developing uh, neonates in them. So that's gonna kind of mess up the space that these guys are gonna need inside their body cavity. And I have to think a lot of times they put out a, a hormone, which basically early on, depending on what their fat cells are like, they're going to eat, maybe, this is a male, so I don't want to bother you too much, but these guys are really interesting species. This is an animal that I always call them like luxury, but it is really a luxury being able to have these in a collection takes a long time to raise these. We've been raising our breeders for ages and uh, it is literally a financial investment and it's also a huge investment of your time because maturity on these guys could easily be five years. And you know, there are certain species where uh, maturity, this, this cage lights out, leave that alone. Uh, some of them are some things like a ball python or a boa constrictor. We can, we can get uh, maturity younger age. Certainly reticulated pythons at the very least are three years or better. This guy's going to start doing some crazy moves. So I figured why I'm just waiting on these guys because I am feeding these animals in the same cage. So I'm target feeding, which basically means locate the animal. I uh, size the appropriate size meal and then I feed it and I'm still supervising what's going on. See that one back there. Just to make sure everything is okay. Because sometimes some snakes will just go to sleep and sit there and wrap around it for ages. Because, you know, I'm sure in the wild, they don't have a lot of competition on the same set of branches as they're locating their prey. But in captivity, we're going to get ones that are speedy eaters and ones that are maybe not speedy eaters. So from that, we'll just sit there and watch you. So remember one thing, when you are feeding any snake, uh, we'll just say snakes for right now. But when you're feeding them, the, the part that is the most defensive part of this animal, which can bite if it ever needs to, is busy. And once this animal starts uh, taking down its prey, it really is putting itself in a position where they're very vulnerable. So they have to trust the activities that are going on around it. So some of these animals are, you know, will be reactive. So I used to breed a fair number of like Amazon tree bows. And one thing that really drove me crazy when I would feed them as I'm feeding a group of them and they each grab their food as I move to go feed another one in the same area, a lot of them will see the movement, they will release their prey and then busy themselves with me. And that was very frustrating to say the least. And see, I bothered that male and he just dropped his food. And that literally is all on me. So now I'm going to go locate that. So that little guy, my baby, I know, this is, this is the reality. So we can do this again. So what I do is I'm still trying to get it to think that it's alive. But that was literally my mistake, I believe, because I'm sitting here mucking with this, just trying to give you guys a good video. But if I get out of this guy's vision, he'll be a little less reactive. So let's see if this video is good enough for Donnie 
to do a quick little video on some uh, some of our Amazon basins. We have uh, actually some really good Amazon basins available right now too. I'm just reveling in some of these. And I have a pretty good size colony I've been building. And uh, this is just some of them. Well, you did. See, some of these are fast. Look at you. So let's quickly go over temperatures. So I prefer, as adults, in a breeding situation, these guys could easily go, I probably wouldn't go below 73. So my room temperature right now is 73. And hot spots are up to 95. And they'll move around, figuring out what they want. And uh, one thing is having the enclosure spacious enough where I can go from a 95 degree hot spot to, you know, mid seventies where they can still find a, an appropriate perch place where they feel safe and secure. Uh, and everything is happy for them. And I get all the temperatures in between. And so this animal will now locate itself wherever it wants. So as these animals are ingesting their food within a few days, they uh, start to gas up. So basically the whole metabolic process is, is very involved with reptiles because they really can break the stuff down. They're digesting bone. There's a lot of uh, material to digest. So I just want to make sure that one guy wasn't dropping it. So you really want to make sure you're managing the temperatures and it takes a fair bit of energy to digest this stuff. So they're going to start, when you burn calories, you're going to generate energy heat you know so that's what the measurement of heat so as this guy's digesting their normal internal temperatures due to the fact that they're metabolizing the, the bolus are going to raise so i still need to make sure i'm giving heat but i'm also giving a cooler area where this animal can then as it maybe feels like it's getting too hot where it normally would bask it will go into a, another little sub area where it's still getting enough heat to digest and be happy but still feel comfortable and if I don't manage all of this, then uh, we can have you know, any kind of problem with these guys. And the typical thing would be, uh, certainly Amazon basins don't do it very often, but they could regurgitate. So if I fed it too much, I didn't manage its temperatures, I dehydrated it, feeding it too often, not letting it clean its system, any of those things are uh, aspects. These guys have massive teeth. Let me put my thing down so I can hold this steady. That's brilliant. Give Donnie some pauses. Look at those. So she's just gonna work, work that in. So emerald tree boas are a a species that is pretty much best looked, just looked at, set up in a nice enclosure. I really like some of the zoo med enclosures, the skyscrapers and all that. You really can manage uh, some animals comfortably. It looks spectacular. They're very functional. And uh, years ago, we didn't have that. We didn't have these options. And uh, caging can be a real drag to get your hands on and actually you know effective caging that works well i feel really bad what i've done to this one man oh, oh look at this he keeps see that's me messing with him so generally what would happen i would probably just feed these guys but i figured you know why don't you show you just a few of the things that happen because you know we, we do live in a reality and these are living animals they have uh, various levels of uh, toleration for what what we're up to let's try you again he does not like what i'm doing so at some point i'm going to have to probably heat yeah i'm gonna have to heat this up these guys are big time into uh, thermal 
imaging, so to speak, of their prey item. So they just got cooled down. I just rained on them. And uh, so their, their body temperature is a little bit cooler right now. So I've ruined some of their basking temperatures because the, the ambient temperature that I'm being they're sprayed at is cool. So their whole temperatures have cooled down. So here we go. This animal would easily accept another meal. But look at her. She's very efficient at when she ingests something like that. So I'm going to leave her alone for the next uh, two weeks. And I won't bother anything uh, with this. And these are different than green tree pythons. Green tree pythons can seem to burn through uh, a little more frequency of, of feeding, but you know, you don't want to overdo it with them too. Any arboreal species, you just want to be a little aware that they have to locate themselves on a perch. And when they're sitting on that perch with the big bolus, and bolus means that they've ingested, you know, some food item, is uh, they're gonna have to sit on that perch and they're gonna have to be comfortable. So variety of perches and stuff. So I am redundant when I am talking about these tree boas because this seems to be one of those things that are easy to mess up. You can see, so it makes, it's an obvious, food situation where you can see that there is some thickening oh, makes the body swell a little bit that's about your limit that's what you want to shoot for and uh, I have to be very redundant on all of this just to make sure I'm being clear and concise Big, just big, big teeth. Caninus. And she just works alternately those forward canines. You can see that. And she kind of just, even actually the bottom ones too, and they just alternate pulling it back. And uh, mechanics of this are just wonderful. Well designed for what they do. <laughs> no, it's not a voluntary bite video. So this little girl, hi sweetie. Daddy loves you. Ugh. This girl, she, she just knew, she knew the difference between my hand. Hey, come here. Nope, see that? So she got a little bit excited, right? So she's still, She's so keyed in on rodents, but she wants to eat so much more. And that wouldn't be good for her. <laughs> Poor Donnie's like, that would have been a great video. Blood. I'll tell you a funny little story. Years ago, keeping emerald tree boas. This is ages ago, even before really nerd. And I was, uh, I've always been into uh, emerald tree boas, green tree pythons, and anything that's green, just glorious. And I had lost an emerald tree boa in my house. Uh, I think I just left the cage open and uh, I couldn't find it. So I just was like, it was bizarre, where did it go? And uh, one evening I'm um, in my kitchen and I had a big 125 gallon fish tank in my kitchen because I love fish and all that. So I'm sitting there and I'll sit here, squeak. And I'm like, what was, what? I, I couldn't understand. I'm like, what, what was that? And um, like every house has, you might have mice. So it was the squeak of a mouse. And I'm looking around and very quickly, I realize something's hanging down from the stand of my big 125 gallon fish tank. And an emerald tree boa that had been loose had found a brace up right underneath the tank and it was just hanging on this brace. And when these guys often feed, they will just hang their head down and this is what they do over water tributaries or whatever, uh, hanging their heads down over uh, rodent areas where you know uh, tree rats are using things or any kind of uh, you know birds or whatnot. So they'll hang down once they've located a suitable area that smells like some kind of prey and uh, they'll 
a kind of ambush, but they're also in some ways, it seems, active once they see movement. So this animal had realized somehow that there was a mouse, smelled the mouse, located itself where the mouse was, and basically just set up shop and zapped this mouse. And it was really just amazing because I had not considered looking under the tank at the stand, but I thought that was a really interesting little story. Just giving Donnie B-roll, hopefully he likes it.